a warm and graceful morning to all of you. Respected Chief Guest, Honorable Vice Chancellor Himati Nandan Bhumana Professor Annapurna Nokia, Guest of Honor, Dr. D. K. Swan, Director Health, Safety and Environment Group, Park Mumbai, Guest of Honor, Dr. Anita Rada, Director User, Professor R. C. Ramula, President Radnit, Dr. Sherja Pan, Principal Dolphin Institute of Biomedical and Natural Sciences, Dr. Shruti Sharma, Coordinator IQAC DIPNS, Dr. Ashish Raturi, Organizing Secretary Rednet, and all the esteemed members of scientific fraternity. I, Dr. Himani Danwal, on behalf of Dolphin Institute of Biomedical and Natural Sciences, welcome you all in the first international conference on radiation awareness and detection in natural environment jointly organized by Dolphin PG Institute of Biomedical and Natural Sciences, Dehradun, Government Degree College, Dehradun, Department of Physics, HNP Garhal University, National Radon Network Society, and Uttarakhand Science Education and Research Center. Dolphin Institute of Biomedical and Natural Sciences is honored to get this opportunity to host this prestigious event. Over the period of three days, the audience present here will be enlightened by the various advances and breakthroughs made in the field of radiation awareness and detection in natural environment. Now, I request Principal Ma'am to welcome the guest of honor, Dr. D.K. Aswal, with a sapling. I request Dr. Ashish Shaturi to welcome Professor R.C. Ramula with a sample. Now I request Dr. Shruti Sharma to welcome our guest, Professor Tibor Kovex from Hungary with a sapling. Lighting of lamp marks beginning of every program in an auspicious manner. I request guest of honor, Dr. D. K. Aswal, Professor R. C. Ramola, and Dr. Sherja Pan to come on stage for lamp lighting ceremony. Thank you. 
Thank you all of you. A leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. It's my privilege to invite Dr. Shelja Pant, Principal Dolphin Institute of Biomedical and Natural Sciences, for welcome address to this August gathering. Ma'am, please. A very good morning to one and all present here. It is indeed my pleasure to extend a warm welcome to all the dignitaries on the dais for the inaugural session of the first international conference on radiation awareness and detection in natural environment at Dolphin PG Institute of Biomedical and Natural Sciences, Dehradun, Uttarakhand. Heartiest welcome to Honorable Vice Chancellor H.M.P. Gadwal, Central University, Professor Annapurna Nautyal, Chief Guest of today's inaugural session. Madam has joined virtually. Welcome you, ma'am. I welcome Dr. D.K. Aswal, uh, Director, HS and EG, Bar Mumbai, and guest of honor for today's program. <laughs> Welcome, Professor R. T. Ramula, President, Redhead Society. <laughs> All the distinguished guests from academia, industry, research organization, PNP, Fusey Films, our guest from press and media, I welcome you all on behalf of the organizing committee of this three days international conference on radiation awareness and detection in the natural environment. This conference is being organized by National Redon Network Society Rednet in collaboration with user Dehradun and in association with Department of Physics, HND Garwal, Central University, Srinagar. Joint organizers are Dolphin PD Institute of Biomedical and Natural Sciences and Government Degree College, Dehradun. Degrees on the dais and dear friends, I take the privilege to give a brief introduction about this institute. Dolphin PD Institute of Biomedical and Natural Sciences established in the year 2002. It is affiliated by HMP Gadwal, Central University, Srinagar. Institute is accredited by NAC B++ in the second cycle and recognized by UGC under section 2A. Institute offers job-oriented, undergraduate, and postgraduate programs in the field of life sciences, applied health sciences, commerce, and education. My dear friends, we all understand that the radioactive elements, they are present naturally in the geosphere and can also be produced by human activities. Your radioactive elements, they emit radiation in order to attain stability and all living beings, including humans, plants, animals, get exposure to these radiation. And the exposure of radiation beyond a certain limit is hazardous. On the other hand, if you see, unlimited doses are being successfully used for cancer therapy, for food preservation, in diagnostics, and research on metabolic processes. This conference aims to further expand the awareness of radiation and its impact on living beings and our climate. Experts 
and eminent scientists are amongst us to discuss the facts related to the effects of the radiation. I'm sure the delegates will have a significant takeaway from this three days conference and will have a memorable time. I extend my best wishes for the successful conduction of this workshop. I welcome one and all to this international conference. Thank you, ma'am. It's my privilege to invite a persona of international fame and a leader in a field who needs no introduction, Professor Dr. Annapurna Nautiyal, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Himati Nandan Bahuguna, Garbhar University. Her area of interest is international relations, but she has a keen interest in regional and national issues. She was a Fulbright Visiting Professor at Department of Public and International Affairs, George Mason University, Fairfax, Virginia in 2006. She's also a member of advisory committee of the Nehru Center of Aligarh Muslim University. She has authored many books related to world politics, human rights, and India's foreign policy. Ma'am, we are very honored to have you here. Now please grace the event. Uh, thank you so much. I hope I am audible. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So very good morning to everyone uh, present in this auditorium. And particularly, I would like to uh, give a very warm welcome to uh, Dr. D.K. Aswal, who is our alumni also, and who is sitting on the dais. Uh, he is a guest of honor, but uh, I think he should be the chief guest of this program, not me, because he is an eminent physicist, so he should be there, not me. But anyhow, so I am the chief guest, so thank you so much for inviting me uh, for this uh, program. And uh, I would also like to welcome all of you on behalf of the HNB Garhwal University. And Professor R.C. Ramola is there to welcome you physically. I'm online because of some other schedules which I could not postpone. So therefore, I am addressing you uh, through online mode. So uh, let me first uh, let me first first of all say that it's a good initiative on the part of HNB Garhwal University to uh, extend its wings elsewhere also. Like this program could have been organized in HNB Garhwal University, Srinagar, it's Sri campus. But I think Professor R.C. Ramola thought that we should expand, we should extend. So he decided to organize it in the Dolphin Institute. And also, uh, he has also uh, uh, taken the help of the co uh, college uh, to be part of this uh, three days international seminar. Uh, you have mentioned that this is the first international conference on radiation awareness and detection in natural environment. Uh, so um, I think this is the first conference which is also being organized uh, in Dehradun by HNB Garhwal University. I hope I am right. If I am wrong, please correct me. So I would uh, like to uh, applaud the efforts of the organizers and also all the participants and also all the societies who have joined uh, this uh, conference together uh, on this very important area. I am not a subject expert, Professor D.K. Aswal, Dr. D.K. Aswal is sitting there with you, who will just address you physically and uh, who will also introduce this topic. But I would uh, like to extend a very warm welcome to everyone present, on the, uh, present in this hall on this occasion because I cannot see anyone, but uh, maybe you are seeing me. I do not know. But I would also like to share some of my thoughts. Uh, day before yesterday, there was a webinar by the uh, by the Ministry of 
Information and Technology and uh, three more ministries where our Honorable Prime Minister spoke uh, in the inaugural session. And his emphasis was on technology, that how we can uh, transform the life of the human beings through the use of technology. We have enough technology, but it has to reach to the people. So similarly, the science has also to reach to the people. Basic science or life science or any science, it has, it has to reach to the people to make their life uh, happy, healthy, and safe. That is what science is required to do for the welfare of the human being. Because science is always for humans. If there are no humans, then what the science will do? And recently, I was reading one article, and that's a very interesting article, and that is about Ukraine, that how Ukraine has been surviving uh, in such a war scene. And they have used the technology like anything, like the artificial intelligence. Uh, they have uh, transmitted all their data or they have they, they have uh, they have collected all their data uh, in the iCloud through the technological intervention so if the russian mi missiles hit their buildings or the uh, or the center of information the information is not available to them but to the people and to the government and to the government functionaries for future use and the same thing they did for the people also. The people are still talking or they are in, in contact with one another with a, uh, with a digital platform that is SpaceX. So they are connected with one another. And this AI has become so important that uh, all the people are talking about it. So our prime minister also talked about AI. Because so far we know that the, uh, we can we can fly the drones and they can they can deliver medicines and they can be helpful in topographical measurements or geographical measure, measurements. But he 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 suggested that everyone should think and they should give ideas at least ten ideas that how this AI can be used. So I I invite your attention towards this also because although it's not part of your conference but. I think you should also expose the students or also uh, give this task to the students that they should identify at least 10 area where this artificial intelligence can be used for the benefit of humankind. And the, the goal behind it, observe, orient, and decide. So science also does it. Observe, orient, and decide. And therefore, it is very important for us as a society to be observant, to be oriented towards the well-being of the human beings, and very decisive. Whenever there is a there is a call to take take that call, and that call should be for the welfare of the human beings, for the society. And since all of us are educationists, so in education we can bring lots of changes through the uh, digital te technology or the technology technological intervention. And I think we are doing it in a very, uh, a very, a very big way. Uh, the universities are also taking many steps to uh, to be very, uh, I think, to be very friendly towards the students. And now most of the things are digitally available. So that so some of the some of the worries or some of the tensions of the students have also reduced because our main stakeholder is students. So my my suggestion is also that. Please talk about it also, although you are talking on a very, very specific area and that is also related to the human well-being. And you would be you would be uh, devising you. You would be speaking about the various ways where this kind of an, uh, awareness can be generated and people can be uh, safe from this kind of menace. So uh, my only only suggestion to you that you are doing a commendable work, but please keep the society before you and that's why that's what you are doing and that that's why this whole seminar this conference is uh, planned so this is for human good only for societal good only and for the welfare of the students so i give my best wishes to each and everyone as i said that i am not a, an expert on the area so i cannot talk much there are many experts uh, i can see in the in the, in the audience they are sitting they'll be sharing their ideas. So my best wishes to everyone present in the hall, particularly to the organizers, and my regards to Dr. D.K. Aswal 
and uh, uh, best wishes and warm regards to everyone. Thank you very much. I request Professor Bodai and Dr. Simiti to kindly sit in the front row. Sir, please. I request Dr. Vidit Tyagi to welcome Dr. Bora. I request Dr. Shruti Sharma to welcome Dr. Simal. Simal sir. This prestigious event would not have been possible without the generous support of our sponsors. I, on behalf of Dolphin Institute of Biomedical and Natural Sciences, extend my heartfelt gratitude to our sponsors, PNB, DST, and USERC. I am glad to invite Professor Kuldeep Singh, Convener Redneck, to brief the audience about the conference. Sir, please. Thank you. 
Director Health Safety and Environment Group, 
Bharat Mumbai for his efforts. Dr. D. K. Aswal is a gold medalist in MSc Physics who served as Director National Physics Laboratory for a period of six years. He has several key positions at national level, including Director Central Electronics Engineering Research Institute, Pilani, Director Science, Technology and Development Studies, New Delhi, Chairman National Accreditation Board for Testing and Calibration Laboratories, etc. He has distinguished himself as an academic, research and development scientist, a science administrator, and a meteorology diplomat. Sir, kindly grace the stage. Very good morning to all of you. Very good morning. Uh, you know, this conference, uh, which is on the uh, awareness on radiation, right? Uh, so, uh, the question does arise that why we have to make people aware of radiation? It means what that either we don't understand radiation or there is a misconception. So, uh, just I ask a question, please do raise your hand. How many of you are scared of radiation? Please be honest and raise your hand. Okay, so by and large, you know, uh, everybody is scared of radiation and therefore, it is worth to have a uh, international conference on awareness on radiation. As you know that uh, when the earth was formed about uh, 5 billion years ago, this place was full of radiation. And in fact, it is full of radiation even now. So while you are sitting uh, in your chair, do you know that how many gamma photons they penetrate through your body? They are roughly 5 lakh photons per second. They are just passing by your body. So if the number of photons, 5 lakh photons per second, they are passing by your body, <coughs> nothing is happening to you. Then why are you scared of radiation? So that is the point which I will discuss in my keynote address today, uh, which will uh, be after that. But if you see the radiation, the kind of benefits it has given to the society are enormous. Imagine if there would be no X-ray, half of the population of the world would have been linked in. Because X-ray only tells you where your body has developed a crack. If there would have been no X-rays, I don't think we could have diagnosed any of the disease, tuberculosis. Anything that happens in your lungs in that part. Because it can penetrate deep into your body and see what is happening inside. So if the overall quality of life have improved in this globe, it is because of the radiation. So there are misconceptions. So I will uh, discuss that a little later from now when I deliver my presentation on some of the beautiful sites. Hopefully you like that. And uh, I come to you know, the Professor Ramola uh, for organizing this kind of event, which are very, very important. And uh, uh, I hope let us learn uh, together something on the uh, radiation, which is so fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It's my pleasure to solicit the presence of Professor R. C. Ramula, President Regnet, on stage. Professor Ramula was director of SRT campus. Barshai Thal, HNB Gadhal University from the year 2013 to 2019. He has a vast research experience as research fellow in CSIR New Delhi and postdoctoral fellow in DST New Delhi and CSIR New Delhi. He has been recognized as one of the world's top 2% scientists in the year 2021 
and 2022 by Stanford University, USA. His fields of specialization are nuclear physics, nuclear geophysics, radiation protection in environment. Sir, we are very honored to have you here. Please grace the guy. And a very good morning to all of you. Uh, at the outset, I would like to welcome you all on behalf of the on the behalf of the National Radon Society. Uh, in fact, uh, there was a need of to form a society. I think in 2015 we formed a society. To just to get aware of people about the radiation and then to organize the seminars at different places. And uh, Professor Kuldeep Singh has already mentioned that our, about our activity in the past. And this is the fourth conference, our society's conference, and first international conference on the radiation awareness. And if you see on the title, it is written the awareness uh, in the natural environment. Natural environment means the environment we are living. And as already mentioned by Dr. Aswal, that we are being exposed continuously by the radiation. And it's not only that we are getting the radiation from the earth, which we call the terrestrial radiation, but we are also getting the radiation from the space in the form of the extraterrestrial radiation. So we are continuous as we are born, we have born in the radiation environment, we are living in the environment and continuously being exposed with the natural radiation that is in the form of the terrestrial as well as the extraterrestrial radiation. And now the society we have given here the name the Radon Network. Because Radon is the only element in the radioactive series which is in the gas form. And because of that, what happens that the radon when it is formed either inside the ground or on the surface of the ground, it enters in our environment. And then with the inhalation, it goes in our lungs and it may, you may get, I mean, uh, after decay, the possibility of the some damage in the lungs. But our body has the recovering power. So there is no problem. But the problem comes only when it exceeds the recovering power of our body. So that we have to find out. Awareness is basically for the purpose that people should know that what is happening in our environment. Is radiation harmful? And uh, Dr. Aswar, of course, will tell you detail about it, that what is the harmful effect and what are the, uh, that beneficial effect. But I would like to point out here that it is very important to get awareness. Especially, I will give you an example. Uh, Professor Bajwa is sitting here and uh, Dr. Pandit is also here because few years back there was a misconception, I will say, that uh, there are some cancer cases in the Batinda area. And uh, nobody was aware that why the cancer cases are increasing. And PGI in uh, Chandigarh, they have declared those villages as cancer villages. And then a team from Gurnanad Dev University, because they have also the roots in the Gurnanad Dev University. And uh, Professor Bajwa was leading that team, heading that team. They went to the Batinda area, collected the sample of that uh, breathing water sample, and then analyzed them in the laboratory, and they found that it contains very high uranium concentration. So that was very alarming because very high uranium concentration in the breathing water sample may be a reason for the cancer in that area, the cancer cases in that area. Then the interest. Department of Atomic Energy and then some people from the Power Atomic Center, they visited there. And I mentioned uh, Dr. Pandit here because Dr. Pandit was at that time a member of the Board of Research in Nuclear Sciences. We had been together many times there. And when Professor Bajwa presented the results of that uranium. But the thing is, high uranium content is there. And very recently we had been there in Batinda area. And we also made a survey in that area just to verify, to confirm if we have really the very high concentration. Yes, that is very high concentration. So that is the awareness. Now the people are, what, what they are doing, they are not drinking that water. But the water is being transported from some other area. And then 
they are using that water. So, so far we could not find the source of that uranium because it is, I think that it is the duty or it is the responsibility of the geologist because Dr. Pandit is a geologist and we discussed it many times but so far they did not find what is the source of that uranium. So that is one important point and of course you will have some good paper from him because he has mentioned, he has published, recently published a paper from the Karnataka area or Ampa area, the two very high uranium content in the water sample and you will talk about the source and effect of the uranium. So this is the part of the awareness. But you should be aware of the people that either you use it or not if we talk about the high radiation area. But in general, be fearless. There is no problem with the radiation because we are used to this radiation. So that is the only point. Second important point I believe, the uh, idea to form this society was to get the collaboration with the people. It's not possible that one organization, one institute or one people roam around the world. Everybody has the responsibility to collect the data. Detection is also a part of that society. Detection and then awareness. First we detect it and then get the awareness. So detection, so for that we have to develop a collaboration. And in India, we have done it, I mean, first time in uh, 1997, there was a collaborative research program with the help of the Department of Atomic Energy and the Baba Atomic Research Center was there. And at that time it was a small collaboration group. But in 2012, we developed a large collaboration group of the North India. And the Rawal University was there, the Nanak University was there, and we had, we, uh, we could uh, produce 26 research projects within that collaboration in the northern India, in uh, Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu Kashmir, Punjab, and Delhi, and uh, Rajasthan. These states we covered, in UP also, we covered for that collaboration. And uh, the report was submitted to the um, BAE or BRNS. And uh, I think uh, they will do something there. And then after we realized that, okay, if you go for the recommendations of the radiations, there are two major agencies. One is ICRB, International Council for Radiation Protection, and another one is UNSCIA, United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effect of Atomic Radiation. So whatever the recommendation they give you, you have to follow it mainly. But we found that all the recommendations are generally based on the measurement, based on the results, and based on the effects in Europe or in the American countries. And Asian data was missing, not completely, of course. There was some data like if you talked about our country, Kerala is there. But because we have many other areas having to say high, high radiation concentration or radiation content. So Asian data was missing. So at that time, we formed a group having Japan, Korea, Thailand, China, and India. I was coordinating from India. So we have generated the data from some high background radiation area from all these five countries and submitted to the UNSCR and ICRP because we have a coordinator among from the Japan, Professor Tokunami. He was supposed to come but somehow he did not come. Oh, uh, Professor Omori is here on behalf of Professor Tokunami. So he is the leading person in that area and he has submitted the data to UNSCR and uh, ICRP and maybe in future we will have some reference of our data in those committees. And the second important collaboration we just developed that is the asian african network for the radiation studies and tomorrow morning session is completely dedicated for that project i will say that mou we have a memorandum of understanding between uh, our university the tokyo metropolitan university and then in thailand also and we have um, uh, the participants from middle east and in Africa, like Egypt and other countries. So tomorrow we will have a very special session on that particular topic. So that will show you that how this collaboration works. That is more important. And very soon we are going to launch a new collaboration that is for the uh, Asian Oceanic that will include the Australia also, Asian Oceanic Association on the Radiation Protection. And it will be launched in the Hirosaki University in September 2023 because they would have a conference 
uh, on the death of Redesani in Hiroshima, and we will launch this um, association in uh, Hiroshima. And uh, in one of the session, we will find time that Professor Omori will tell you details about that particular association, that how it worked, it worked and anybody can be the member of that um, society or um, that group. So these are some collaborations we are making and getting aware people about the radiation. It's not, uh, as I'm already told by Dr. Aswad, it's not always harmful. The harmful is only when, I mean, it comes to the very high level, especially when you talk about the artificial or the induced radioactivity, like in form of the bomb. But that bomb, that energy, I mean, that uh, mass energy relationship, I mass energy relationship, that energy can be used for the peace, like uh, we call it atom for peace, for the energy, that for uh, that medical applications, you might have heard about the uh, gamma um, uh, therapy and uh, radiation therapy. These are some um, therapies that are going on in the medical science. Then, of course, for the food preservation, maybe Dr. Aswal will cover all these topics in details. So, these are some areas where radiation is very beneficial. So I, 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 I think it is better if I close here because we are having a very interesting talk by Dr. Aswan and he will talk detail about it. But the only thing is I would like to say here that uh, when we organize a conference, it should have some good outcome. And that outcome, we generally, whenever we organize a conference, we would like to Professor Kuldeep Singh told you that we are already have organized three conferences and we have published the papers in very good journal. <laughs> very good journal. So this time also, we will publish this selected paper. I am using the word selected paper. Selected paper in the journal of radio and nuclear chemistry. And I have a message from uh, the editor that paper should not only be on the on this survey, but it should have scientific content. It should have the international relevance. And if those papers does not have this um, uh, scientific contents and international elements, maybe the paper will be sent back to the desk of the editor. And uh, I have with me uh, Professor Tibor Kovacs. He is also co-editor with me. I mean, we are the associate editor in that journal. So he also conveyed the message that it's better if we convey the message to all of you. So please take these points while writing your paper that your paper should be a quality paper otherwise you may not be able to publish it so this is one message and at the last before concluding i would like to thank the management the faculty and the staff of this dolphin pg institute of biomedical and natural sciences for organizing this event over here and i think that the weather is also very pleasant, uh, neither hot nor cold. And uh, I believe that uh, you will have a very nice academic celebration in the next three days. So with that wishes, I close, I will conclude here. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir for your motivating words. At times our own light goes out and is rekindled by a spark from another person. Now is the time to show our gratitude to all the esteemed guests who have graced the occasion. I request Principal Ma'am to present a memento to guest of honor, Dr. D.K. Aswar.
Sarkari request to Dr. Ashish Ratuli to present a memento to Professor R.C. Ramula as a small token of love. Thank you, all of you. Now I request Dr. D.K. Aswar to present the keynote address to the intelligentsia presented. So please. Cheers. Attendance, please. Cheers, Dr. Bhattacharya. So, sir. Two of the students come first. Shutina, those students who are here. Cheers, Dr. Bhattacharya. No, no, I see. Dave, nice to meet Camera. Yeah, big. Tripod को थोड़ा बोलो अरे उस पे नहीं दिखा अब दिखेगा नहीं हो गया बस कहां जाना है क्या चाहिए सारे चाहिए नरेंद्र पीछे का लाइट का देखना लाइट ऑफ कर यार मारो यार हो गया Yeah, so uh, good morning once again. Can okay, we settle now? Yes. Uh, so uh, today what I am going to talk about is radiation, Ramana fact, and the global well-being. And uh, as you know that uh, on 28 February 1928, Sir Sidney Raman discovered the Ramana fact. And that Ramana fact was discovery of a new radiation. And therefore, it is very important that uh, we should discuss radiation in Ramana fact. And the theme of this year, of the National Science Day was 
global science for global well being and when we are talking about a global well being i don't think there can be anything better than the radiation radiation is a key factor which is very important for the global well being and make no mistake radiation is a energy packet it is a moving energy packet all the time so it is up to the humanity or it is up to the scientific community how to use that radiation for your purpose so when we talk about radiation this is the spectrum of radiation we have a, if you want to learn the radio wave we use the radio wave radio wave then we have a microwave can you bring the knowledge of this for the microwave it's impossible because it is this microwave is used for your cooking in for the night if there is no such thing you never feel heat so the heat you feel is coming from your infrared light visible light imagine if there is no visible light can you see anything If all of sudden this radiation peaks, there is a complete darkness. You can't do anything. This is the highest state of radiation. No issue with this. Then ultraviolet. Ultraviolet is little higher than. As we go from radiation to ultraviolet, the energy increases. Now, fortunately, God has given human eyes, which can't see below 0.2 millimeter. Suppose if you are able to see the point zero zero one millimeter, you will see all the microwaves around you. All your skin is covered with your microwave. It is the UV radiation that kills that. That is the kind of level. And UV radiation, particularly where you don't get any sun, for example, in the uh, Russian countries. So there, if you don't have UV radiation. You can't form the vitamin D also in your body. So some sort of time they give a small dose of UV radiation to your baby, so that the vitamin D will form in you. Then energy increases. Remember, all the time when you are doing something, the energy increases. Then there is the X-ray. X-ray, as I said, my you know, my, without X-ray, this will happen. If you have problems with your feet, X-ray, your brain is in pain. If your chest is not normal, you take X-ray. Then your leg is broken, you take X-ray. And the final is the gamma ray. Gamma ray is in fact when you are sitting over here, there are so many gamma rays that are entering your body all the time. What they do to your body? That is a fundamental scientific question, which still remains unanswered. So let me talk about the Raman effect first. Raman effect. Start with radiation and then infrared radiation. Normally, when you pass, when you pass the radiation to an object, most of the time the energy is not being absorbed in the thing. Suppose you have an energy or a chill, it passes through the media, the same radiation come out, and that is known as radiation. That was known. Now, when the photon goes through the media, it can reduce its energy. So that is understand. Or anything which passes. What was not known was, if you pass the energy of the photon and it comes to a high energy, it will die. And that was not known. In fact, Raman himself was not very sure that kind of time. So he called it a new radiation. And the new radiation was discovered by two people, C. V. Raman and K. S. Krishnan. And K. S. Krishnan. Was his PhD student, and he happened to be the first director of National Physical Laboratory, and I was fortunate to occupy that chair as the acting director of National Physical Laboratory during 2015 to 2021. So now Raman effect is used as a fingerprint. If you have got a molecule, you just take a Raman effect and you get what molecule it is. It is like an X-ray of molecule. So Raman effect is used almost everywhere. 
So the Raman effect, he called it new radiation. Because Ranjan in 1895, he discovered X-ray increase radiation, X-ray radiation. What he was doing, he was having a metal plate and he was bombarding the electron and there was a phosphor metal in the central body. So he didn't know that and he called it a new radiation. So those days, during 1895 to almost 1930, people were working very hard on radiation. Number one, what is the wavelength, what is the energy? Number two, what are their applications? Number three, all the radiation is interacting with the matter. So, Crompton scattering, Rayleigh scattering, Raman scattering, Baba scattering, all those scattering were discovered on those things. All, all, almost everybody could be found on by except the Raman Baba. So, that is the reason. So, when he discovered this one, he took a challenge and he took the X ray image of hand of his own wife. And that's the record. And what you can see is that even those days, the pattern of him was there. So, when that X ray was discovered, so Becquerel in France, he became very ambitious. He said, Why I need an electron beam to generate X ray? I can generate it from the solar light. And he got all of the minerals from different countries. And he was doing experiment. And as you know, in France during winter, hardly there is any sun. So he got one mineral. He put this photo that is like, wrapped with it, and he could not see the sun. So he wrapped it and put it in his drawer, table drawer. And for a few days there was no sunlight. So the everything was kept in dark. And he got very frustrated. He was looking at the sun and then finally he opened it. To his surprise. He got his photo that is it developed. It means what? There was no electron beam, there was no sunlight, it's still the photographic plate developed its own. It means what? It means the radiation is coming naturally from the mineral. And that was called the radioactivity. Now the second question was that what kind of minerals are emitting the radiation? So that time there was a poor girl from uh, Poland. She was looking for a job. Everybody knows her name. My favorite, Madam Kitty. She said, okay, I will try. I will find out to give in the middle which are the elements they are moving, they are emitting the natural radiations. And she did all the hard work. And anybody, whenever you go to Paris, you do see the Eiffel Tower, you see the other good places, please also do visit the Madame Curie's lab in the University of Paris, which is the centrally located. How filthy condition was given to her? She did the tons of pitch blend and finally she could get two elements discovered. One was the polonium. Why polonium? Because you see us from Poland. So, so the the love for your nation is always important. So she took out a polonium. She gave, and because of that, many French people they got angry on her. Okay, she is living in the France and living in Poland. But that happened, and then she discovered a radium along with her husband. And both of them they got a low price. So when this radium was discovered, it became like a miracle material. So cancer was not that much happening now. Cancer was happening in those days also. And those days there was a huge amount of the skin cancer. So this is one of the classic examples. Well, there was a forehead cancer. Cancer is nothing but the abnormal growth of the tissues. And what she was doing was that she was putting this radiant thing on her forehead and this cancer is gone. And it was so inspiring to her own daughter. She took this as a mission and treated to activate or to uh, this radium, the, all the patients, all the public, and she also got the Nobel Prize. So you know that Madame Curie is a madman. Her husband got Nobel Prize, her two daughters got Nobel Prize, and her two son in laws also got Nobel Prize. So, since radium, everybody knows that it glows in the night, it gives the phosphorus light, blue color. So, those days, it became a beauty product for the female. 
So what they were doing, imagine those days, they were doing not, not so much of electricity, even in Evo. So if you are dark and you are know, this one, you imagine, oh, I am here. Yeah. So, so much of sparkling, you know, comes from your face. And it not only it was for the female, it was also for the male. There was an energy drink. The standard agent solution for drinking, drinking. And people are drinking, they will drink the energy drink. And it appears that more than three lakh bottles were sold. Okay. So everything was going fine for the radiation, everybody was the radiation. So many low price coming on the radiation. All applications were coming to radiation. Unfortunately, this happened. I don't know, uh, I wear this uh, long ago, the radium watches when the <laughs> glow in the night. So these girls, they were employed. And what they were doing, that help for these girls, they have a nation, and they were putting them out. So when they were painting these nations, and these numbers, so they were putting the radium paint and working. So consequently, they deposited large amount of radium in their jaw. And it also gone in their body. And as a result, what happened was they got the sense. And they also bone was eroded. And all of a sudden they were the human friends. This radiation is bad, radiation is bad. <laughs> so now much later it was analyzed. X axis is the number of years and infinity. And Y axis is the amount of micro humid that has gone into the female's body. Red dot is those who got the cancer, black is the two who didn't get the cancer. What is important to see here, those who got less than 100 microcurie of the radium, nothing happened to them. And those who got between 100 to 1000, that's one lakh curie, only 50% of those got the cancer. It means what? Up to a level of radium is okay, beyond that, there is a possibility that we will be So, that time then it was realized that all the radiation in the ambient is coming from the ground. Because the ground has got natural minerals like radium, uranium, thorium, all are discovered and they have a radioactivity. So basically they are the hybrid element. Okay, and they, they use this one. But it was not known that medicine also coming from home. So this was a scientist, Dr. Hess. So he did the experiment. How do I know that it is only coming from the ground? So he developed his own balloon and he flying child flying out. So the idea was if you go away from the earth, what will happen? It should go down. It should go down because it is coming only from the earth. But what he found that I don't know if it is infinity. So come on. It means that the radiation is coming from outside also. And for that, he also got no effect. Okay. And imagine in 1936, nobody will dare. He made his own balloon and went to top. So, point of time, trying to say any of us that please do take a risk while you are doing experiment. Without taking the risk, you won't get any result. Remember the point. You have to take some risk when there's a some feeling on it. So, as we know, that sun produces too much of energy by fusion reaction. It produces too much on it. There are so many stars. They also produce so much of radiation, and radiation of not only gamma and x ray, they also produce very high energy particles like iron particles, uranium particles, which are traveling with a speed of 2 lakh kilometers per second. So much of energy. And fortunately, we have got the earth, it has got its own magnetic field. So it is tapping up all the but still, something is coming in. So, this is said. So, this earth, earth is a very tiny earth, remember, we now just feel where we are. So, this earth is a part of the solar system. Solar system is very tiny. This red one goes to the solar system neighborhood. This neighborhood goes to the Milky Galaxy. It goes to the local galaxy group. And we have got the universe. So, imagine where is our earth? It is among several trillion stars, we have got one tiny. Almost nowhere. So many times we have a ego that I am a bigger one or I am a bigger nation. 
like let's say any place no they are quite equal for no reason if you see our existence as what they say universe we are all of nowhere and remember everything is full of variation as i said so but our forefathers in india they were very very nice they said that all the time we have been imparted by the radiation from the earth from the top and our human body is made of five elements the five elements are air the oxygen the earth the organic compound which you have got the fire that burns our combustion that burns our thing the water and finally the sky and what is that sky there was not a very clean description of that sky and the sky is nothing but the radiation there is the radiation so they are integral part of me imagine if there is no radiation i don't need the light and as i said we have got almost 30 trillion cells in our body so like we have got one small earth among the trillions of stars similarly one cell our body has got 30 trillion cells so one cell is equivalent to the one earth in the universe Because we have got tens of thousands of in our body, and I can say that all 24 by 7 the radiation is passing through our body. So background radiation, as Professor uh, Amala said, we have got red on there, we have got red on there, we have got drop, and the 18 percent is your artificial sources, radically large ones, and uranium and thorium. They are the two main elements which are present in our. They are decay and they produce red on there. So as I said, that we have about 30 trillion body, and we have about 30 trillion cells in our body, and roughly 100 trillion microbes in your mouth, in your gut. They always keep on fighting in our body. So there is equivalent. So what this radiation is impacting 24 by 7 in our body? What they are doing, teaching? So you might have heard of the salt in here, the person who discovered the quantum mechanics. It was very clear. The each of the human being is made of atoms, and therefore the physics of quantum mechanics should be applicable here. But somehow you could not get answer. And the analytic radiation and evolution, the scientific American review, so many research was done, but unfortunately, the nature did not reveal its secret, and that question is still remains. That if there is no energy radiation, will the life will survive on the earth? So the, one of the first experiments was done by the Harman, and this fruit fly is known as Drosophila. Do you know how many note flies it has given? It has given nine people the note fly, nine global lives. And still, there is another ten note flies which we did yet to do experiment with the Drosophila. Drosophila, because we have got twenty-three pairs of chromosomes, this fly has got a four pair of chromosomes. The production is very poor, and almost is massive in human being. So that's why it has given nine Nobel prizes so far. So what he did was, he was trying to understand what this natural background is doing. So he asked his students, give them a small dose of radiation and see what happens. Unfortunately, they could not find anything. So in fact, Herman became so unhappy, he went and committed suicide. He went to the top of the mountain and jumped from there. And after three days, he said, "Okay, you know, nothing has happened to him." He came back to the laboratory. Now he was a very, you know, angry. He said that to his students, "Increase the dose of radiation." Nothing happened. Increase more. Increase more. Increasingly, he gave eighty million times higher dose to the fly. And when he gave 18 million times higher dose, he got genetic modification. The gamma rays did change the DNA, and he published a paper, genetic modification by X radiation, that published in Science. Now he knew that nothing is happening there, and therefore this study was become very controversial. Everybody wanted to know 
why where is the data and lose over there but he didn't give it and this period was put upon for what so scientists became more excited they could see that they can break the uranium in two parts they can create nuclear energy and this is a small reactor the first reactor of the world the first in the world the first time so that time the oil and gas company they really became scared of the weather they say that something is going wrong there and they started pulling out more to the muller who so keep on telling their radiation is bad it is definitely genetic disorder unfortunately before the nuclear energy could come the hiroshima and nagasaki happened two bombs little boy and hatman were dropped Several thousands of people killed. Now, when a bomb drops, if a bomb drops, most of the energy comes from in the form of shock wave. The shock wave is so large, everything disappears in the pieces. And the second one is the energy release is so high, the temperature goes to several degrees of temperature. It means what? Everything goes into the vaporized form. So what you see at the bottom, the cloud forms. This cloud forms in nothing but each and everything that comes under that becomes in the vapor phase atom phase. So we are made of atoms that everything else is a normal example of this one. So now two things have happened. Very unfortunate. Now finally the radiation now, which is only 15%. And so we start talking about which is the radiation you should be aware of that. So all of a sudden in 1943, this fellow gets known by now. Very surprisingly. And he knew that at low dose, nothing happened. In fact, his own friend, Kasper, he did all the experiments. In fact, he came with other conclusion that probably at low dose, you may have a beneficial effect. Okay. But when he gave the when he got a low price, he said that. There is no threshold while receiving the number. It means a single radiation can cause the genetic disorder. And that became a problem for the world wide. And so much so problem that Time magazine, everyone knows Time magazine. That was the front cover news and look what it said. When the atomic age really gets started, with the atomic power plant producing much of the world's energy. The level of radiation is rising. People living near the plant get more gamma due to their gonad every part. Whether this will be good or bad is not yet unclear. In last week, last week, it's called blue eyes, Dr. Buller. Growing with this is newly born or eyes, give back the signal. Most mutations are bad. In fact, good ones are so rare that you can consider them all as bad. It would be fortunate we thought if all those exposed atomic exposed such as the city in Hiroshima were to be made for me. He said he had all the people select and what Japanese government did in that decision. Okay. Now then there was question whether what happens the low dose? Either you follow the product I showed, you better think what are the responsible, or you follow the hard of it. That at low dose is beneficial. Definitely at high dose, it is dangerous. It is like a fire which becomes uncontrollable. But look at the fire at the house. If it is not there, I don't think the action will ever take. So a small controlled fire is good for your own, but not for your family. So that's why the visibility can stop the effect. Much later, in the public course, US NRC made a He said that although it can be obtained in laboratory animals, given very high radiation, no evidence of genetic effect has been observed among the children born to Abraham survival for the Russian American athletic. Any genetic disorder coming from which so I myself have gone to the Kerala beach. When this Chernobyl happened, in Chernobyl they said that everything is 3.78. This meter, if you go to Chernobyl, 
if you go normal, it will show 0.2 or 0.3 microsecond per hour. But if it is 38.6, almost two orders of magnitude higher than the Kerala. So what happened to Kerala? There is no extra transient cases in Kerala. The light expected no. Same is the case with the after. Same is the case with all the countries. So the alternative method, method is model. The linear growth actual model is any radiation is harmful and wrong. And therefore, the salabrasi is going to be a new one. Let's say that when the threshold, good threshold, it is, it is beneficial. Now, how many of you have taken the COVID vaccine? Majority of you have taken the COVID vaccine. What is the COVID vaccine? That's vaccine. Is the dead virus in the body? So it means what? When the dead virus, virus is in the body, it mediates your immune system. And that immune system kills the remaining system in the body. It means it improves your immune system. How many of you take the homeopathy medicine? Major of you take homeopathy medicine. the homeopathy medicine. And when he talks about the potency increase, what do you mean a potency increase? Any any answer? When a doctor says that I can give the potency of the medicine, what he does? What he does? We are directing. Why do we tell you? We are no no increase the potency. Sorry, ah, they increase the potency but decrease the So it is this biophysical effect. And can you tell me what happened when you have got a Doctor, they give you medicine here. This is a negative effect, detrimental effect. And they give you try a medicine and they say that okay, this medicine. For example, you have a rashes in your face. You go to the and they give you the medicine. All of the time, you see your rashes are increased. It means you could get the right kind of medicine which is responding to your immune system. So he becomes very happy. He will not be angry or corona. I will increase the potency. What he does is he decreases the growth from here to here. So it is a potential direction. It means it has the beneficial region. And for the doing that is that is maximum beneficial. So because it invokes your immune system, and that's the principle of almost all the chemicals we do. Even your medicine, all the medicines are in that zone. So same is the radiation. So basically, at low doses, there will be beneficial because your activation of adjunction system, adjunction system, system, adjunction system, system, they give you benefit effect. Obviously, I high dose, it is going to finish it up. And the beneficial effect can come from hours to the months. Now, one of the biggest things we have talked about is Chernobyl action. The Chernobyl action happened, so many people were killed. How many people were killed when the Chernobyl action happened? Only 28. And there were 106 out of 134 people they died, 106 people they remain alive. They got a high dose exposure. And obviously everybody died. So they also died and then they had the analysis. So their martial rate is 1.09. But if you see the Russia Belarus today, the martial rate is around 1.4 percent. It means though were exposed to the higher one, their martial rate was slightly lower than the average. The media became so what I call it? Bias. They said that this is going to happen, and more than one lakh women they went for the unscheduled abortions. And there are many other countries, neighboring countries, where those they've been preferring abortions. Those babies are not happy or happy very healthy in the There is no problem with it. It means they because of the fear, so many abortions are not actually required. Now compare this case to the Bhopal. We don't know Bhopal in Yes, actually some of the gas got leaked and the body was uncounted. This kind of thing didn't happen at Chernobyl at all. This part is entire, entire, <laughs> entire theater was very glassy. The entire thing get getting glassy. Okay, so 
imagine the chemical toxicity is much higher than the radiation one. But do you oppose the chemical? Are you scared of chemical? Because that kind of thinking and mindset was not given to us. Radiation was given a mindset was because certain people they wanted to quantify the nuclear energy, not remain radiation. So then there was a talk. When Chernobyl happened, there was so much of radiation is leaked in roughly 2,800 square kilometers, there won't be any light. In fact, this mushroom, this mushroom is grown exactly at this plant. And if you see the wildlife, we have a, such a wonderful wildlife now. It is one of the best bioreserves on the earth item today. Because there was no intervention, Whatever the radiation was there, it is there now. Nothing has happened to these one. You see, they are biological. If this radiation can kill human beings, they will also be killing animals. And for what very interesting result which has happened. So this was the site of accident and roughly 60 kilometers away. The frogs which are found there are green there. And as you go towards the site, when it came to play, the radiation level is increasing. And what they have found is that the frogs slowly turn to the dark. And you have got a very black frogs which are living in and around the Chernobyl reactor. And they are eating all the radiation. What they have found is that these black frogs now, they are more strong than the green frogs. So, initially, when the people were dealing with radiation and saying that they are good, it means something is good. So, the hypothesis is that the radiation has a biophysic effect, means at low doses it is good for you, at high doses it is good for you. This is seen here. Similarly, unfortunately, in a Fukushima happened. Tsunami came and they entirely wiped out the entire country. The Fukushima nuclear plant also got blasted. How many people died because of the Fukushima plant? Not a single one. Two, five, nine people died because of the heat, not because of radiation. But if you see the story in your news channel, this has happened, that has happened, this has happened, that has happened. And the law, the establishment has happened. We have to evacuate people out of this. So people were removed out of the Fukushima and they displaced more than 90,000 people from the plant. They killed 1,600 people. So much so that people were at ICU. And they said, it is has happened now. You will get a cancer after 25 years. We get to wait again. So this fellow was removed from his bed, taken away and he is dead. So these kind of rooms are found. And in fact, uh, two weeks ago, we had a conference, as uh, Professor Ramana said, the ICRP, International Commission on Radiation Protection, who are responsible for these bombing groups. The chairman of ICIP came and I read this one. I said that you are responsible for the situation. The evacuation was not recorded at all. It was wrong on anybody's part to wait for the people. Give them so much of process. So, the first thing which comes, as Ramolaji was also saying that they found uranium and probably this related to the cancer. Sorry. The cancer, all the cancer generates. What has to go in this one? If you see the pie chart, which are the cancer causing things in our body, the number one cause is your diet. The yellow one is your diet. The, the food you eat is responsible for your cancer, number one. Number two, cause of cancer is tobacco. Number three, cancer is your viruses, your occupation, the treatment of alcohol, and then. Radiation does not figure in this one. Very minimal, 1% of that can be that drop. So if the, it is not causing the cancer, why the extent of radiation is causing cancer? Because there is a false property on it. And you see that the diet is responsible and therefore it is age dependent. As you grow old, the probability of getting cancer is with this. 25, 40, 50, 60, 90 will go up. And if you don't get cancer after 35, you don't have to get it. So, the number one is your diet. So, 
or is smoking. Why does this happen? It is very clear. Your DNA gets damaged. Right? So, smoking is number one because smoking has certain molecules. They actually damage your DNA. And when this DNA does not repair well, it can cause you cancer. But the question is that why does your food cause you cancer? Because when you eat a food, what happens? We create a reactive oxygen deficiency in our body. Because whatever you eat, eventually it has to be crushed down in form of either sugar or beans or that or liquid, whatever it is required, and it forms a huge of the reactive oxygen species. That reactive oxygen species goes and attacks your DNA. Now there is a calculation done. If I eat a food, my body generates 10 to 9 free radicals, billion free radicals. Of course, we have got a mechanism of our body, antioxidants, so that it's metallic peroxide, it reduces to the cell wall states. But still, there will be damage, so you have enzymes, it repairs it and exposes the cell wall And finally, removal and nutrition will be about one. So, every day, Anyway, your body is forming cancer cells. You agree or not agree, your body will form one and two cancer cells. But since we have got trillions of cancer cells, trillions of cells in our body, it does not make a difference one or four hundred days. Now, same thing if you compare with 100 million fever of radiation dose which you get. The ratio is 10 to 7. It means if you get 100 million fever of radiation dose, the oxygen oxygen species form in your bodies are 1 million times lower than 0 0.0001 only. So largely it is because of your And in fact, there are many NCR data which are available. Even in the atom bomb survival case, there are cases that the probability of cancer do who got the deaths exposed, the probability of cancer is less in them. And there are many other places where it is shown that if you are exposed to a small amount of radiation, the probability of cancer death. In fact, there is just many research done on the radiation worker at different countries. It is seen that those who are exposed to radiation, their probability of cancer is lower than the normal population. Say, for example, I give one is down the first one, general population, middle of this, that is the point seven two. If you out of 72 only get cancer against the under the normal population. So when the ICF comes, there are many cases. There were cases of Taiwan, British Islands, and so in those cases, they were all exposed to radiation, and the probability of cancer was much lower than the normal population, which is against the theory of linear low threshold model of the cancer product. Now, if you go to Brazil, like our Kerala beach, they also have a sand beach. They also have this kind of parts. They measure how much is one. Even in Czech Republic, there is only a mighty part one. Where you are red on, and red on the zero. You see, the worst is that this is happened 100 years now. In Germany, Germany is dead against the beer. But Germany is the number one country where you have got the official regulated. Lay down is power. These are underground mines. People go there and take it uh, on there. And recently, one person who has completed his 100th year, very happy and young, which is that it is because I am coming here. So they have a fixed protocol for one day. They give you three doses one hour each and they give you for 10 days. Now, in Japan, you know, when you have got a Somebody has a lung cancer. So all of them are not ready to go for the operation. So since red one is alpha meter, it can kill localized one. So the therapy was given on January 9th, 2018, and May 17th, 2018, after a few months, the cancer was gone. And there are many such cases which have been reported in the now. This particular case where you have autoimmune disease. You have no option left off now. You have to die because the immune system is overactive. So, this can be given. And this is 
very almost 37,000 patients with different disease and he has claimed that success rate is between 70 and 90%. Now the most interesting, this we can still say that okay, no, 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 no. you know astronauts, they have gone to the space, cosmonauts from America, they have gone to the space, so all of them were investigated. And see that what has happened to them. So the result was the same. Contra positive logic suggests civilization not having a strong impact on the mortality of US astronaut Soviet and Soviet and Russian cosmonauts. There's no changes in that. And have you heard of the Baj Aldrin? Baj Aldrin? Baj Aldrin was a still Armstrong human. Come on, you should also know the Baj Aldrin because they went together. Neil Armstrong was the first person to land and he was the second person. And have you seen his little figure? On February 23, he became 93 years old. At 93 years old, he got four times married. Very young, very dynamic. So, if the radiation is so bad, those who have gone to Roma, this data in the public and scientific report, absolutely no major difference. With this structure. This is that kind of radiation is tolerated in the form. So basically, what I am trying to say is that at low doses, you have almost the almost is affected. It can be beneficial. So the biggest problem is that the international community is not really changeable. I spoke with ICRP. And ICRP is so change because I was very, very emphatic on the Fukushima case. Because they say that the moment you get 20 mini sewer doors, you should evacuate the public. I say that why should you evacuate people at 20 mini sewer? Now they have changed after Fukushima, after killing so many people, they have changed the limit to 100 mini sewer now. And in fact, 100 mini sewer should be there, and getting 100 mini sewer doors is not easy at all. So the biggest problem is that the lack of understanding of the, the biological interaction of radiation with the cell. The beauty is that photon is quantum mechanical particle. All the processes that happen within the cells are quantum mechanical nature. So how, how the quantum mechanical particle is interacting with another quantum mechanical particle is not understood at all. Schrodinger did, many people did. But I think, I hope I am in the right place in the biological sciences. I think this should be taken on the back. Interaction of the one, the key fundamental one. And there are many laboratory experiments. They are deep. If you go deep underground mine, all your radiations are seen. Or at least it is real life. It is seen that the viruses do not go there. The viruses do not go. So many radiation is required. And as Sardinia said, something is required for that. So this need to be understood. So now I will go quickly. Uh, <coughs> if you want to have a global well-being, which I said. So global well-being is required. We should have more of the electricity. So we call the human development is that we have education in this And it is seen that the per capita power consumption, India is here, it is almost very less per capita power consumption. And therefore our SDI is low. The country with the higher SDI is corresponding to those who have a per capita most power. Because power is quite everything now. Manufacturing this, that, your data communication, the research, you know. So that is required. But if you see how the worldwide power is produced, the power is produced largely by coal and gas. And everybody is talking about the climate change. The coal and gas are emitting through the greenhouse gases, like carbon dioxide, methane, and that is creating problems. Even in India, it is a natural energy. So, government of India has already declared by 2017, we will make a carbon neutrality. Everybody knows that. Right? So, the carbon dioxide emission retrogrades has to be reduced because they are doing hot chemicals and as you know that the temperature is only gone by about 1.5 degrees Celsius. And by 2050 they predict it will go 4 to 5 degrees and up. And when that happens, I don't think we are going to survive that. The sea level is increasing, many of the cities are converting to water. Now, if you see the CO2 emitted by many sources, your coal, gas, biology, nuclear wind. Coal generates 
120 gram per kilo water hour. You want that will have death rate. How many deaths per million in our generation? Coal kills 170,000 people every year. Sorry, 170,000 every two years of kilowatt power generation. Against nuclear energy only next year. So, which is the best energy? Which is the best energy? Nuclear is the best energy. It does not produce emission, carbon dioxide, greenhouse gases. It does not kill your people. So, now do you understand that why the nuclear is opposed so much? Nuclear is opposed so much because we have been given a fear of radiation. And as I have already told you, no need to fear of radiation. It is good for us. So, we need to understand that political question which has been arisen. Why the people were denied of nuclear energy? So, definitely, all the good things that we have in this house, we should have balanced with the ecology. How do you get the ecology? We have done more than now, if you take a nuclear energy, you could produce how much? America is the number one producing country. America produces almost 31% of the total world energy in nuclear energy. And 15% of their own energy. America produces 50% of nuclear energy and 50 from the remaining sources. France, 14% very small country, 70% of the energy is produced for nuclear energy. India. Unfortunately, we produce only 1.6% of nuclear energy. Remaining is from coal and other things. Why we are producing so much energy? Because our people are so scared. They don't allow us to put our nuclear power plant here. In Kurunkulam, we made a plan and it, they did allow us to run for almost one decade. So that's here. So, thank you, Professor Ramona. Awareness on radiation is very, very important. And United States, they have a 93 letters. Look, China. China, in last one decade, they have added 39 new nuclear reactors. So, the winner of the world in longer period is going to country who is going to produce more nuclear power. It is going to clean, it is a rest of space, and this and that. It just need to be done. Nuclear Medicine Center. I don't know whether you know or not, because since we are not using the radiation, much of the places. In India, 850,000 people die every year because of the cell. 850,000 people die. Because we do not have so many nuclear medicine centers. As of now, we have about only 240 nuclear medicine centers in our country. Whereas, in our opinion, there should be at least few thousands of them. Because People do not want nuclear medicine centers in their facilities. They feel that the radiation and it is going to cause cancer. But if you open many of the centers across the country, you can make people for water. And with our town is a design of the uh, DIC. Of course, radiation therapy, you know. The food security. You see, as our population is increasing, we are occupying the land, we are doing construction. We need a new technology. So called nuclear energy. Same pond, large number of seeds. And all the mutations done by nature are through mutation and they have a speed of 1 by 10 or 6. 10 or minus 6. So, what we are doing only is by radiation, we are speeding that up. Nature has got the radiation, we are increasing very more and we are making it faster and we can create this kind of pond. So, we can bring food security in our country. So, when we do this one, we have got an ideal disease resistance, well adopted, better efficiency. And the world has already put 3,200 varieties of seeds. Now, in Africa, where you have less water, harsh conditions, that, you know, one, so one can grow two kinds of one. So, particularly in Uttarakhand, and last time when I was meeting with the Honorable Minister, I said that we should have a nuclear agriculture uh, more propagated in Uttarakhand. So if you see this kind of fruits, it is because of the mutation. And the responsible for the green revolution by the Swami Nathan, and the mutation was one of the Not only that, this can be used for many purposes. It can be for animal production, plant breeding, uh, insect pest control, food regeneration, soil, you know, because these are DRC produced crops. 
and almost under the Rajasthan, Kerala, Karnataka, everywhere we have the food now. The oil sushi food, food irrigation. When we are exporting things to America or the Gulf, they need to be irrigated. That's why they will get spoiled on the way. This most important part, highly important, is soil water crop nutrition, and that is done because of the food they inject. Isotopic reduction of nitrogen, phosphorus, oxygen, and carbon. Similarly, animal life are maintained to better quality. So now, it's expanding. We are going to put government at the ground fleet of new reactors. So, ask you to support that cause. Okay, so it should not be opposed at all. And one of the concepts is like a more model reactor, which is going to less. And finally, I will say that. Uranium does not cause any cancer. Let me make it one of the state clear statement. Uranium is a very, very weak, very, very weak radioactive material. Only if you consume lots, if you deposit in your kidney, you probably see damage, but that kind of thing is not. Now, like coming to Punjab, I was also part of that committee. Since coming in Punjab, we have used so many fertilizers. So the phosphate fertilizer, which was coming from the uh, Middle East, that contains huge amount of uranium in natural uranium. So that was spread. Number two, when you burn the coal plant, coal comes from mining, and mining cannot be without the uranium. So when it was burned, and the fly ash was coming, fly ash has got a silver. Last time the uranium, and that uranium got before we got a double kind of contract. So uranium in India is coming because of two activity: use of the fertilizer coming firstly from Jordan, and uh, secondly the fly ash, burning of the coal. Now the cancer which was genuinely there, it came because in India we have a very bad habit which we should shed away. After taking any drinks. From the water, what do you do? You clean it up and fill water in the poor thing. So the pesticide water used by those poor farmers were cleaned up and used for water and they were drinking that. So those have got a pesticide molecule in their one, and most of them they had a food there coming because of that. And we have done the uranium analysis of 400 districts across the country, including Punjab, very recently study. Out of 770, not anywhere we got very abnormally high uranium content. Now there is a problem again. Depending upon the uranium in your groundwater, uranium is a natural phenomenon. Say, for example, in Finland, in Finland, the uranium in water is natural. So they have kept their drinking water limit 100 kg per liter. Germany, they don't have any so they have kept two ppm per liter. WHO, by taking all the things, they have kept 30 ppm per liter. Unfortunately, our DIS, they also kept 30 ppm per liter. Whereas our own AARB, Atomic Energy Board, they kept it at 60 ppm per liter. Now, the moment you keep 60 ppm per liter, or plus the measurement error, it will also increase your 90 ppm. I don't think India has to worry about So, by this argument, I can say that, and in no way, uranium causes cancer. Be assured. If you consume it very large, it will only destroy your kidney. So, it has nothing to do with your cancer, uranium has nothing to do with cancer. So, the kind of uh, you know, going to the public, you know, inciting people's feelings, it causes it. So, so that should be uh, not there. What is important is that. As I said, that the number one cancer causing is our diet three, the tobacco. Tobacco is going to stop. Secondly, we should have a large number of hospitals, nuclear medicine centers. And the final cancer treatment is only by the radiation. Right? So, radiation at low level, below 100 minutes, you don't have to worry. At 100 minutes, you never get any level. And at high doses, it's a controlled radiation. And that controlled radiation. And for the good purpose, like treatment of cancer, like your FAC, your CT scan, your nuclear agriculture, and finally, 
some amount of time. People living on the earth. Today we have got a 7.5 billion population. Some point of time it will be 10, 15, 20, 100. If nature does not do anything, we have no place to live in. This. We'll have to go somewhere else. And when we are going somewhere else, we have our own to do. So we should know how to go for that. So therefore, the research how the radiation will impact the biological system should be taken. Thank you very much. So if there are questions, I can take them. Yeah. One minute. Ah, both of them. Again, uh, that is another topic on the internet. Okay. See, for example, in uh, some of the part of former US, they have kept their limit at 970. So even it is a 200 dB. And the water we consume, how much? You see, because heavy metals body is out. Even if it's high cancer, it's not body cancer number one. Because it does not have any activity. And activity radioactivity does not cause the cancer anyway at that level. It is not the on the data. Okay. So even if it's a slightly higher uh, one, I don't think, but the way we have analyzed. Okay. Now that's a different story which I have not tell you that there are uh, Agencies they want to purify the uranium in the groundwater. They want to put their market into that. But the message is that you don't have to worry about it. Also migrating to the other pesticide that is migrating from water. The moment you stop the Jordan based, Jordan based fertilizer use has been reduced. Okay, or now they get purified some of the RCF in Mumbai. That's an amount of fertilizer. Only when you use it, it's not. Okay, it was true, it, uh, about a, uh, 10, 5, 10 years ago, it was a problem because the fertilizer coming from the water was not being processed properly. It was put into that. So, yeah. Thanks. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the good thoughtful thought regarding the awareness of the radiation. There are the two groups. One is for uh, beneficial and the other is for deterministic. Both groups are suggested here. The short error. People need the threshold error for the just for the two things. So this is one. And another one is uh, how many pesticides are uh, that is, uh, and thousands or more than thousands or New varieties are produced, uh, species related to food grains and everything also. So, what is the main uh, important uh, proteins if it affects the public or uh, not to the radiation of the food grass? And other things, what about the pesticides? So, that is the more pesticides are used in the plants. So, is it affect because the past tense are not allowed to certain. Pesticide uh, limits and uh, what is the uh, permissible limit? Both groups. So you are say that uh, 100 to 200 is a permissible, but uh, as per the risk of 500 is the risk above that. So we have to conclude that uh, why they have difference of opinion to the public. Uh, Unscare, uh, UNFPA, and uh, ICRP, and the all of the International bodies are suggesting a particular uh, levels of radiation. So, yeah. so this is what I mean. Yeah. So, so you have asked many questions. I thought about them. <laughs> but, but, but uh, number one, as I said, that DNA damage is responsible for the for the character. DNA damage if you have got a sound chemical out there. Now, when the analytic radiation comes, 70% of our body is in water. And everybody knows that when the radiation comes, of course, it is the water that we can see. So, if you get all the kind of basic oxygen, that will be H I N O, H I N O, they are compacted. Okay. But when you take the chemicals or when you take 
no you are going to get a capillary which your body does not recognize naturally so therefore the absence of pesticide is enormous so so that was it so so in any case we should remove the use of pesticide which is minimize the radiation uh, radiation the second point is that as i said that when you do anything with radiation eventually if you see the evolution of life as we have seen it on from the evolutionary to this to this to this how does that happen nature did that with good mutation okay so the radiation the continuous good mutation all of a sudden that came on now if you see on the earth the maximum natural background is of 100 degrees per year so in my opinion We have done in Kerala, we have done in Ramchal, we have done in Dadi regions. Up to 200 millimeters, but not a single study has shown that this is bad. So safely, we can put bleed on the nature, bleed on the nature, and put 200 millimeters. You can put another bit, make it 100. Okay, so that is the answer. We try also to do ICRP. Now the question is that if ICRP dictates it, for sure, what they will do? All their shops will be closed. All those who are giving you shading material, all they will be closed. The scientists which are saying that all the units are bad, all the units are bad, what will they do? So, so that's why I had to put it in global well-being. So we should understand even in science what is benefiting the individual and what is benefiting globally. So the scientific community for the day. I have met so many people with LNG model. Discuss with them; they have not really disproved it. I tell you, prove it. So, because below 100 millisievert, until unless I bring in quantum biology in the picture, that will take some time. So, when will that will happen? Maybe 10 years, 15, 20 years from now, the quantum biology will come in the picture, and that will be answered. Okay, and pesticide, any pesticide that goes in your blood, blood. So I answer this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As far well as uh, you, you said that uh, the background of Ramsar and uh, Kerala. Kerala, as well as the other places, is also very high. And these are the, really it is true that uh, it is because of thorium. It is not because of all or uranium. Because Ramsar, as well as Of Kerala, it is not of monazite. Right. Monazite main mineral of thorium. Oh. It is the radi radiation coming from thorium. Well, uh, radiation doesn't distinguish whether it is coming from thorium or uranium or from potassium or any other thing. Natural radiation comes from thorium as well as uranium. Uranium is very good. Uranium is actually Or, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, as soon as water is concerned, what you were saying, in uh, some parts of southern India, they are going to present in this symposium or student. We <coughs> have a very high value. Of course, I am not connected with. Uh, I am not telling that that water will cause uh, cancer or anything. But in terms of value, I am saying. That some of the waters, the brown waters from parts of Karnataka, very close to Bangalore, is recording as much as around six thousand, five thousand, or eight thousand, and it is not a single peak; it is widespread. Yeah, this is the data that. Okay, so so I will answer. No, 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 no. Uh, when I am talking about the radiation, it is a <coughs> Now, uranium is one of the most dangerous one because it gives you 2.46 mm. 2.46 mm, where your X-rays are only eight. So, natural radiation already on the ionic side. So, monoxide natural one is 2.5 mm. Very high energy. 
Number two, one of the biggest problems we can see in this country is the measurement. And uh, already I was in, in the governing board of BIS, uh, Bureau of Indian Standard. And uh, that time, Ramdas Paswan was the minister. And the drinking water was always mostly he was a minister. But he was a so, in fact, we had a meeting at the Kasumi. Now, uh, there was a fight from Lutama, fight from Lutama, and unfortunately, for me, I was not in time. So, Ramdas Paswan, he said, that, please come and explain the order. Then I said, please do one thing. You take your five liter of water from your tap, give to all the laboratories in the country across the country. He made 500 samples. He has given across, now we need to explore all the laboratories and see that what are the impurities in that and what is the something. And when the data was collected, I think artificial intelligence will also create. <laughs> Somebody says that the arsenic is too high. Same water that is in arsenic. You see, it's a measurement problem. And the measurement problem is because I was the NPA director, I know. Until and unless we have a reliable standard with respect to which you can compare. The whole economic as a project failed because people could not assert what are the impurities are there. Kishine Bola, somebody said that it's full of impurities. Give some uranium. Oh, what do you mean? You see, bigger is one thing. Okay, dirt, the head one. The final number that they were there, you know all the toxic elements there. So, what are the toxic elements? You will only clean when you know what are the toxic elements. There. So, same problem I have here. And one of them is that the reference standards. Now, most of the people, we are not very really aware of reference standards, but some point of time we get it from the so called some of the international brand. Now, once they know that these two, they do not have any idea of the standard, they tell you anything. Okay. And some point of time, when I see that situation in our country, it is always like, uh, you know, the village doctor who used to go in the villages and some old people say, I'm having the fever. He will take one uh, calcium carbonate. Make a pill and then you take it this time by whom you are And she should take pill and go to the So, similarly, the standard selling in this country, because I had a direct contact with the NIST USA, and these standards are really, really expensive, which we cannot afford. So, what we say that you give us a cheap one. If you want to give you a calcium partner, you will give anything at the price you want to give. And when you compare your samples with respect to that, the error is bound. So, before sensitization, it is very important that the uniformity of the standards. And that's why then we that 400 districts across the country. Really, we didn't find it very, very abnormal. Okay. So, uh, that the national unity project has been concluded. And finally, we are seeing that your unit and is a very selective place. Very selective place. And the selective place should not be high. Even in Punjab, we have done this is it is high, and this is don't take all of it from the side. And in fact, when I went to the village place, what you are seeing that uh, well, is okay. It is only these people actually take water from it when you have to use it because they are the market studies. People want to interest in that water, which, which is not a collector. And he said that you know, I have been drinking this water for 30 years. So, so, so why do you are worried? So, so what I'm saying is that it should be done for the global wealthy and it should be aimed at giving the solution right picture to the public rather than generating a misconception. So half of the problem of radiation is that misconception was spread. So we can have more questions to the last question. Last question. Let him take your then after we take Uranium is 4,984. Right. So, is there any health effect in that place? No, no, that was that. No. If you see that only 2% of the sample, they have shown the highest uranium value. 
but it is not affecting you. So there's no health hazard. If you can see in the hospital, those areas are not covered. So when they send you the problem, they also ask them whether there is any serious ailments. Okay, but 98% of the ideas can be abnormal, and people really do not think that water is. So, but how much water do you take? You see, secondly, the Indians they take little less amount of water. You see, the total amount we consume is much lower than the other places. Okay, so that's not a point of debate. But first of all, uranium for so that is natural uranium. And then 238 is not radioactive. A very small part of that uranium 235 is a very quantity one percent, very less percent that is not radioactive. So therefore, the radioactivity coming from uranium is also negligible. That is the problem. Number two, biologically is two one. The uranium does not have any radioactive effect. It has got effect only the chemical effect, and the chemical effect means it goes to your kidney and probably may damage your kidney. But most of the time, heavy metals are already plus out uh, in your experience. I mean, he, those areas are actually shorter. So it's obviously that is different. But no, no, not what. That's why uh, if you go to Kazakhstan, the Kazakhstan is thousand degrees above. But all in all the world. So I don't think all of them have kidney problems. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Sir, we're very patient. We have Mr. Mukesh Kumar Goyal, UG Films, amongst us, one of our sponsors. Now I request Professor Kuldi to welcome Mr. Mukesh Kumar Goyal. I request Shruti Shaha to welcome Mr. Utkar Shaha, an eminent expert and architect. Mr. Utkar Shaha. Now, I invite Mr. Ashish Shetty to propose the book. Thank you, ma'am. After a wonderful note, I have to say one thing that it's a conclusion apart from Professor Swan, the head of the university, that if you are not able to read it, you cannot explain it. So you have to read it more. Okay. Life on Earth has developed with an ever present background of religion. It is not something new, invented by the wit of man. Religion has always been here. Unquote. This is by Eric Zehar. A very good afternoon to everyone present here. On behalf of the government, and organizing of first international conference on radiation awareness and infection related environment, we with a great honor and privilege to stand before you to deliver the world time. We are quite fortunate to have all here. In the beginning, I would like to extend a heart of gratitude to the chief guest of the function, Professor Mr. Anokia, under the right answer at the meeting. Thank you, ma'am, for connecting what to do us and to innovate this international conference. Today, my work are not enough to express the attitude of Professor Anupurna Nathyal, who grace uh, virtually uh, this conference and for their kind work. Thank you. I also send a heart to thank to guests of honor and today's team of the speaker of today function and the winning and outstanding scientist, Dr. Dekhi Swar, Director at the NEG Group, GR, for accepting our event. Dear sir, we are profoundly honored by your gracious presence and thankful to pay your second visit to our campus. Thank you, sir. I would like or I would like also like to thank Professor Anita Nawar, Director User, Yahoo, 
those were cheap, uh, those were guests of honor, but due to some other writers, that was cancelled because now uh, she was not here. But ma'am, certainly you were the first one who came forward to support this conference. And we really thank for, for your kind support. My special thanks to Professor Arshi Ramola, President National Vedam Society, Redhead, for his gracious presence in this conference. And this conference is indeed a product of your creative thinking and deliberate work. And they have come up with such a great idea for having this conference at our campus. Thank you, sir. I'm very much thankful to the national and state level government support agency, Justice Sir, and to Track and Future, Deradun. It would have not been possible to organize this event without their support. I also express my gratitude to our sponsor, Punjab National Bank, and few business. And further, we thank Mr. Mukesh Kumar Gordon from Fusifin uh, for standing up for this event. Thank you, sir. Above all, I thank all the participants and delegates from various colleges, universities, research institutions from different places of the globe for their interest of participation. As your participation in this program has turned out to be success of this event. I'm also very thankful uh, to all the program advisory committee members and the executive speakers. Words are not enough to thank your constant guidance and support to save this conference. I sincerely thank Sri Arvind Gupta, Chairman Dr. Pigeon's Institute, for his deliverance and always inspiring us for a high strike in every attempt of holistic activism of teaching and learning. At this point, I would like to thank Dr. Sanjay Khan, Principal of the Institute, and Mr. Nagpal, Director and Minikov, Mr. Minikov, World Director, and Dr. Sukhi Sharma, Coordinator of ITC of this Institute, who have been taking advocating initiatives and always in associating themselves for this program. An event of the dimension cannot happen overnight. The wheels start rolling months in advance. We have been fortunate enough to be a backed by a team of very motivated and dedicated local organizing committee, our administrative staff, research scholars, students, and volunteers. I cannot thank everyone enough for the involvement they have shown and willingness they have expressed to take on the completion of tasks beyond their comfort zone. If time is money, then today you have spent millions for us. I believe that this three days conference has certainly provided an insight to educate people how to control and mitigate the nature of addiction. After conclave, it is expected that whenever we will be dealing with addiction in teaching, research, and other aspects, it demands higher order skills, this exposure will certainly help us to get to the task accomplished successfully. Thanks to all of you for making this event successful. Have a wonderful day at Dehradun. Enjoy the content and the campus life of all the students surrounded by the lush green sun forest. Thank you very much, one and all. Once again, a big thanks to all.
we have a hub in the cafeteria. I'm a little bit more important.